Yes, this is still on your package from yesterday. You only got two problems to do. And you had the white worksheet. No, we did all those. Well, we did them on this sheet. So you may want to have this white sheet with the derivative and the antiderivative handy. Okay, girls? Okay. You know what? There are two new substitutions for this problem. Now, what's different today than yesterday? Okay, Zach? Yeah, it's, no, it's exact, actually. Uh, okay, guys, listen up. I'm stressing this because this is going to be a multiple choice question. Could be in, in the first sheet, too, where you might just have something like this. And that's why using a new substitution, you know, find an equivalent integral or in, equivalent antiderivative. So I haven't done anything with these limits and integrations. But what variable does the 0 and pi over 3 refer to? It's A and B, but what variable? It's X. So these are X values. So if I want to rewrite this with a new substitution, I am not allowed to put in 0 and pi over 3 as the limits of integration because I'm going to switch over to U. So let's see what happens. What would you like U to be? No, you secant of X works. That's 1. You try it. So you go to du. Let's see if this works. What is the derivative of secant? Secant of x, tangent of x. So will that take care of all of the variables in my problem? Yes, because secant times secant is secant squared. That's one way to do it. Somebody else said, no, I didn't want to do that. Well, since you looked another way, you can try it. Sometimes there's more than one way, and you won't get the same answer either way. Tangent of x. And why does that work? Because what's the u? Secant squared. Okay. Which one? It doesn't really matter, although I think the tangent one's a little easier. Should we do that one? The reason being is, oh, no, I guess, because you know what? You guys don't like working with the secant. Tangent's hard enough. He can't really isn't any harder, but you don't have a lot of practice with it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do this. And you say the tangent of x, this part right here, that's my u. So that's u. What's the secant squared of x here? It can be replaced with, because it's exactly equal to the u. Remember, just like in golf, if you're going to take relief, you have to take full relief. You can't just substitute one letter in for part of it and leave the X. You can't have mixed variables there. So secant squared of X here is exactly equal to DU. Now, you have two options on doing this problem. If it's just a regular problem to do it with just doing the answer, you can work this problem with the U, switch back to the X here. Then using the fundamental theorem, use the X value. Well, if I did this, this is what? U squared over... Let me finish this thought and then I'll ask you a question. U squared over what? Two. And you would say plus two, but we're going to switch it back to the x. Okay, now what's your question? I still need a differential. I don't have the x. I have the u. These letters must match. That's what I mean when you take relief. You must take full relief. You must take care of every x that's in there. So some things can be complicated. We are not doing multivariable calculus. That's correct. Okay. Then, then you would switch this back. What is u? That's what? Tangent, tangent of x, x squared x, squared over 2. Now we can evaluate it at our limits of integration, which are what? 0 and pi over 3. Well, what happens to the plus 2? Don't need it. It's going to go away. No? Okay, the question is, what happens to du? This symbol. says find the antiderivative of that function. 
just like the square root operator, which goes away as well. Yes, that probably does help. So when you first started adding, and and by the time you came to school, you guys, Stephen, yes, or Alex, <laughs> I did do it right. Okay, okay. Watch the video sometimes; they're kind of fun. You know, when you came into first grade, assuming you never did any adding, and they did 2 plus 3, you might say, well, where did the plus go? It's an operator. This is an operator. It says, find the antiderivative of that. Once you've done it, it's gone. Okay. So back to here, then you would evaluate the tangent of x. That would be the tangent of pi over 3 squared over 2 minus the tangent of 0 squared over 2 and you find your answer. I can do it. I think it's an easier way, but once I get my integral of u du, to switch the limits of integration first, not to do it here, because guess what I have to find out? The tangent of pi over 3. And I have to find the tangent of 0. What's the tangent of 0? Of 0. Tangent of pi over 3 so that requires some work. Somebody said it's a 60 degree angle. You are right. It's either going to be a 30, 60, or 45. So it's not hard to memorize. I want to think it's a 30 because it's a 3. And life would be a lot easier if that were the case. But that's not right. It's a 60 degree. Um, and let me draw it a little bit more to feel. It's either going to be, you know it's not 45. Because that's got the 4 in it. So I want to say it's 30. Because it's got a 3 in it. But no, it's 60. So here's pi over 3 at 60 degrees. If this side is 2, what's this short leg? 1. And this is square root of 3. So what's the tangent of pi over 3? Tangent of pi over 3 is the square root of 3. Oh, it's here. Don't forget. Yes. I'm answering another question. Sorry, that's confusing. That's the square root of 3 over 1. So your answer would be the square root of 3 squared over 2. Now be careful with this 0. A lot of you want to think that with the lower limit 0, it's always going to go away. That's not true. With just the cosine of 0, it doesn't go away. What? Only the root 3 gets squared. 3 halves. Okay. Now, Unfortunately, on the exam, they have to have these multiple choice. They have to have these multiple choice questions, and they might have written this integral. So this is choice A. Rewrite that as an integral. Well, that's wrong. <laughs> that's the problem. Because what num what letter does this zero refer to? It's the x. So if you, like I said, if you take relief and take full relief, you may not lose the x value here. You can do it the way I did it here without putting anything in and then switching back to the x's and then including these limits of integration when I'm back with the x's. You can do that. That's allowed. But if you ask, actually ask you to match this, this would be a wrong answer. And it's going to be there as one of your choices. They're called distractions. Well, let's do the right answer. Now. Since the x's go from 0 to pi over, and pi over 3, if x is equal to 0, what is the tangent of 0? So I have to do this evaluation I did here sometime. What if x is equal to pi over 3? What's the tangent of pi over 3? We just did it. So that's the square root of 3 over 1. So this integral, to write it correctly, is going to go from 0 to the square root of 3. These are the u values. Everything in your integral must match. Do I have to change back to x's? No. Let's do this and see if we get the same answer. What's the antiderivative of u? u squared over 2. And 
we would evaluate at zero and the square root of three. Substituting that in, well, that's not too bad, is it? Put in the square root of three. I think it's easier. Square root of three squared over two minus zero squared over two, and I get the same answer as three. Does that make sense? I prefer to do it that way. The deal is, on the exam, <laughs> this may be choice B, and this is the correct answer. They will find other things to distract you with. Oh, they, they will. And actually, last year, our multiple choice course went as good as, as our, our teacher. So we need to put a little more effort into the multiple choice preparation. I only have four years I can give you. I can go back further, but the exam has changed so much that you go back and do older exams, it doesn't give you any value, unfortunately. Let's try another one, but let's not go back to this. We have to do everything anew. So we have another one on our paper. And unfortunately, there's nothing in the homework. So we'll find something for you there. There it is. Well, you, the hard part is picking you. And what you're going to like about the worksheet today is on the front side, we give you all the U's. So that makes it a little easier. Then when you go to the back side where we don't, it might help you put back to the front and say, is there anything similar to give me a little bit of help on this? If U is equal to X, have I changed the problem yet? No. Darn it. What would you like U to be? X squared. You could do X squared or X squared minus 4. Your choice. It's usually a little easier when I do that. And why is that going to work? Because what is the derivative of x squared? It's 2 times x. The derivative of 4, negative 4, is 0. And what's it still here? 0. And I call this the brute force method. If you get confused and you just you don't quite know how to put the 2 back in there because it's there someplace, why don't we just solve this equation for dx? We divide by 2x. And then if I substitute that in here, I end up, and we worry about the 0 and 1 in a second, I have x, x squared minus 4u, dx is replaced by what? That's a little code. du over 2x. This is just another way you can do it. I look at it and can see it. Can I cross multiply and get a cancel like that? x goes into x1, x goes into x1. And I am left with 1 over u times du over 2. But what can I do with that 2? I don't like it in front of this. I want to put it out front. Because the x's would cancel. And so I end up with 1 half, 1 over u, du. My preference is to take the 2x dx and say, oh, I've got an x dx. I don't have two of them. So I'll divide by just the 2 and replace x dx with du over 2. It's the same thing. But, you know, if you can't get it to work, solve for the dx here and substitute in and let things cancel out. Because they, if you did it right, they would cancel out. Now, there's only one other thing I have to do is I have to figure out what those u values are here. Because these are x's. So if u is equal to 0, what, I'm sorry, not u is equal to 0. X is equal to 0, what's u equal to? u is equal to 0 squared minus 4. So what's u equal to? Negative 4. So that's this one. Right? And, oh no, I did the other one. I did 2x. Did it the wrong place? Well, that can happen. There could be one that you might mess up and discuss and might leave a negative sign. So this is negative 4. And if x is equal to 1, then u is equal to 1 squared minus 4 or Negative two. That's okay. I've got to keep track of my negative signs, but that's okay. Okay, what's the antiderivative of this thing? You want all that? Yeah. Because if x is equal to one, I put one right into x squared. One squared minus four is negative two. You're going to put back into this little equation you just wrote. 
So it's one half. That's right. It's the natural log of the absolute value of u, and you will evaluate it at negative 4 and negative 3. Some of you will choose to go back to the x's. That's fine. You can. You're going to do this work all over again. So why not just use it as it is? And when I put that in there, there's one half, and it's the log of the absolute value of negative 3 minus one half the log of the absolute value of negative 4. Well, let's pretend it's multiple choice. No, but they might do some work just rewriting that as log. First off, I can factor out a one half. So it's one half, and it's the log of three minus the log of four. And the absolute value. Do you remember your property? Remember this: the log of x to the r is r log x. And any time you have to take a derivative of something like log of x to the r, any of the logs, simplify it first. Put the r in front, log it down. And remember the log of a times b? Log of a plus the log of b. Log of a divided by b. That's right, is log of a. There's three properties. That's all you have to know. So if I wanted to do the derivative of the log of x over x minus 1, I'm not going to do the derivative of that as written with the chain rule. I'm going to rewrite that as the log of x minus the log of x minus 1. And now the derivatives are easy. The derivative of the log of x is 1 over x minus the log of 1 over x, uh, x minus 1 is 1 over x. That's hard. And that was a, the uh, problem, I think, in 1988. Okay, so they, they can do that to you. So knowing that we have this little property here, which is 1 half the log of what? 3 fourths. And we can still go further. That that one might be that way. Now, if it's FRT, just leave it. You can leave it right up there. Don't bother with it. it you don't get any more points by simplifying. Let's put it that way. And if you do it wrong, you lose your points. But isn't this also this? Log of 3 fourths to the 1 half power, which can be written as the log of, I didn't have to write it in front of the square root of 3 fourths. All those different things, I can do. It would be, and I, I think the worst case scenario is she would do this top one here for a multiple choice answer. Sometimes they do on some of the multiple choice, because they are testing a little bit of algebra. Because I asked about that. Because you don't have to simplify anything on FRT. And I said, but you know, they don't know their algebra. And they said, that's OK. We test it on the multiple choice. And they're right. And there's some nasty ones on the multiple choice. And you'll see them. We'll give it to you. We'll work, work it out with you. But you're only going to get one example, unfortunately. So I don't have that many to work with. And then I'm going to give another problem. And while you guys are kind of with the mat over, I'll hand out the worksheet. But let's find the antiderivative of the tangent line. Now, you do not have to know the antiderivative of the log. You don't have to know the antiderivative of tangent. But we can do it. So let's do it. You pull the two out. Yeah. Oh, because that's one over u times u. Yeah. Let me answer that question, okay? Yes, I'll, I'll answer that. Sorry. The question is, what if you have du over u? And actually, it's exactly what happened to me in the other hour. And the way we did it with this other method was it didn't appear. This is the homework. They give you the U's. We can do a couple of them, but I want to do the integral of the tangent so that you know it can be done. Now, here's the question. When you get this, how do you know? Well, this is, you have to know that this property is a fraction 
that this is good. But if you're still looking at the going, I don't know what that is, you don't like the you. So you make it add to things that are variables. So we can do this, we do the same example with that, with a different variable, but it's the same thing. So you should recognize that these are all the same. You might put this in your notebook and say, I need to review that score to exam, because you know you're going to see it. And then don't forget you review that value, right? I'll, have, I'll wear this one again, because you see I haven't done it yet. <laughs> so what if I wanted to integrate the tangent of x? And why not? Because you now are able to do that. What's another way to write tangent? Oh, look at your identity. It's a ratio of two functions. That's right. This is the sine of x over the cosine of x. Now, the hard part. How do you choose the u? Okay. So Jacob said, let's do u equals the cosine of x. If you try to use u to equal the sine of x, you will have problems. <laughs> and you'll see that you have problems, but you cannot get rid of all the x's. If you want me to do it, I will show you that you can't get rid of the x's and do Then that would involve um, a higher level of math class. So what's du? Well, it could be sine of x. These are things to try. This is negative sine of x. And then what's this one? Because you guys get really lazy about this, but du. Because I must account for everything. So I don't want negative sine of x, I want sine of x. So this is going to be not du, but the opposite of du. That must be sine. And this is going to be u. So guess what? I'm going to get myself in that position where I have to integrate to pull the negative out. So it's du over u. But do you now recognize that score? So that's because it's this negative, and it's 1 over u times du. Well, well, you probably should show your work, because <laughs> it might not be this simple. We're just trying to find it, and because we can't. The integral of the log of x, natural log of x, we can't. We could do guess and check, that's about the only way I could do that. So this is negative log of the absolute value of u, plus c, and what was u? It was the cosine. So then the last class said, that's the integral of the tangent. What's the cotangent? Well, using my way of thinking, Tom will agree with Mikey, what's the integral of the cotangent of x? Well, that's negative. I think this will be positive. I get a natural log. I'm going to have an absolute value. Because they're very much related, but what do you think? Sign of x. Once you know one, you know the other. I like that way of thinking, right? Okay, please skip. Um, how do I know that the sign doesn't work? Because I think there's value in doing this. So we have the integral of the sine of x, because some of you are looking at saying, why can't you do that? You're not going to be willing to ask me, but why not do it? So let's put u equal to the sine of x. And du is equal to the cosine of x. See, I like that because it's not negative. But the problem is when I solve for dx, because I'm just going to do the brute force method, divide by cosine of x, cosine of x. So let's go ahead and substitute. Sine of x, that's u. Right? That's du. dx is du over the cosine of x. And I guess what? I still have the cosine of x here. So it made it worse, didn't it? Well, it's u to u, and you can't pull the cosine of x out. That's got a variable in it. Only numbers can you pull out. So I, I still got x's in there. Remember, you're taking the original case totally. Can't have the x's there. Oh, I can make this even uglier by figuring out what x is in terms of inverse signs and stuff. Eventually, I'll end up with something that maybe works, but the other research just works better. So see, you, you can tell right away that this isn't going to work. I don't know. That, that's all you can do. So you won't be happy with any of the problems on the worksheet. I just, I just showed, you don't have to know this on the exam, but if tangent is just cotangent, well, 
changes now get a cosine that's positive they're both logs that's cosine that'll be sine i know it's right okay yeah, 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 yeah. Kayla did it last class okay do you want some help with these or do you just want to try them try them okay i'm gonna pause it or maybe i'll take a minute to help them out 